Hey everybody, remember those dahlias that we planted up in mid-April? Well, it's time to plant them out in the garden. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And I'm gonna show you how I stake those and we're gonna get going on that. So before I get going on the Dahlia project, I just wanted to say hello and welcome. So many new people have found the, uh, the channel in the last month or so, and I'm so happy you found me. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. I love to hear from you. Um, it really keeps me going and I love it. Um, but I thought maybe uh, it was time for a little bit of an introduction. So my name is Erin. For about 10 years now, I've run a blog called The Impatient Gardener, and you can find that at theimpatientgardener.com. And um, there I share education and inspiration for real life gardeners, uh, people like me who aren't professionals and um, you know, maybe have a lot of other things going on in your life so you're not able to spend unlimited time in your garden even if you'd like to. And sometimes you just have to do the best you can. So that's what we do around here is we just do the best we can. Um, my garden is, uh, we're on a little bit over an acre, about an acre and a third in southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, I've been gardening here for almost 17 years now. Um, and basically everything I've learned about gardening, I learned in this garden. So um, there, are mis there are things that I did then that I wouldn't do now and I go back and fix them. And there are things that have stood the test of time. Um, but this has been my my the only place I've ever truly gardened other than um, balconies and container gardening, uh, which is still maybe one of my favorite things to do because I feel like that's sort of my roots. Um, so, so we are in southeastern Wisconsin, zone 5B, um, but that can be, doesn't mean a lot this time of year in spring because behind me, um, past our neighbor's house, about 500 feet is Lake Michigan. And this time of year, Lake Michigan dictates our weather here, which means that our springs are very cool and very slow. Um, we are, our trees are just starting to leaf out now. Some of them aren't doing that yet. Um, but that means we get a nice, long, moderate fall. So, um, you know, it's different. Everyone's zones, everyone's gardens are a little bit different. And so if you ever look at my garden and seem like, boy, she seems really far behind and I live in a similar zone or a colder zone, it's because of the big block of ice behind me. Um, sometimes in my videos, you might see our two dogs. We've got two Newfoundlands, Odin and Dorothy, and they're always hanging around doing their thing. And um, I guess the other thing is that I garden in flip-flops, which apparently is um, crazy. I don't know, a lot of people are really horrified that I garden in flip-flops. So here's what I'll say. Yes, sometimes I garden in flip-flops. Um, we do not have poisonous snakes here that I have to worry about running into poisonous snakes. And if we did have poisonous snakes, I would probably move. I don't care for snakes. Um, and I don't wear flip-flops if I'm operating heavy machinery. And I try not to put a shovel on my toe. I haven't lost a toe yet. And I spend a lot of time washing my feet. I don't know what to tell you. I do everything I can in flip-flops. So that's why I sometimes garden in flip-flops. Um, okay, so that's me, but let's get on with this uh, Dahlia project so I can show you what we're doing today. So I grow all kinds of dahlias, but one of the types of dahlias that I love to grow are tall dinner plate dahlias. Those are beautiful things like um, Cafe Olay, which I think is probably the most popular one right now. And I grow them here along this bed on the house. This is south facing. Uh, it's warm. It's super bright, as I'm sure you can tell. Sorry about that. There's a lot of reflected light. Um, but I like growing those dinner plate dahlias here because they tend to get very tall and of course the flowers get huge. So by growing them up against the side of the house, at least they're protected from one direction and they're supported a little bit in that direction. Also, there's not wind is not really a factor. If you were just gonna put these in the middle of your garden, you would really have to have a really sophisticated staking system for them. So I can get away with a different kind of staking system. I tried this last year for the first time and it worked better in this area for me than anything else I have ever tried. Um, and actually what I've learned is that put your stakes in first. So I put the stakes in before I even plant the plants. So all I'm using are these, I don't know if these are like one inch, it's not really one inch, maybe like three quarter inch square posts that are three feet long, just wood. These are the same ones I used last year. And I pound them in with, so that there's a stake on the end and then a stake between each dahlia. And then what I'll do is something called the Florida weave. Um, I did not invent this. I actually saw this online a couple years ago. I tried it for my tomatoes. It worked great. And so I thought I would try it for the dahlias and it works to me even better for the dahlias. So I'll show you how that As works. As you can but see behind me, I've already pounded in all the stakes. 
there and I've set out my dahlias that I'm going to be planting in here. So this bed behind me, I plant all annuals in here with the exception of there's a climbing rose and a clematis there. Um, beyond that, everything else here is annuals because what I found is that it's a tough place for plants to overwinter in and there's snow piled on it. So I like to actually clean out this whole bed for winter. So this is a bed where I go nuts with the annuals and nuts with the colors. Um, it's just a riot of color. I don't um, have any sort of theme to it other than that I try to repeat the same plants. Um, but I love the, the dahlias as the backdrop to this. So after you put the stakes in, it's time to plant the dahlias. Now, I will put a link to that dahlia video because a lot of the information that I use then also applies if you're planting tubers straight in the ground, which you absolutely can do at this point if you didn't start dahlias in pots early like I did. Um, certainly in most places you can do it by, I mean, if I can do it in my ground by now, you can probably do it in yours. Um, so you can still put tubers in and it's not a bad time to do it because I noticed that a lot of the specialty dahlia nurseries are having big sales right now. So you could still pick, put some in the ground right now and you plant them exactly the same way which is just dig them into the dirt about four inches deep. If any of the ones in the pots turn out that I didn't plant them deep enough, I can always correct that now and plant them a little deeper. But otherwise, it's just a matter of planting these in the ground like you'd plant anything else. So now that all the dahlias are planted, I just want to quick show you how this staking method works. So you take your twine and you tie it off on one of the end posts. I just use a clove hitch down there, but you can use, you know, whatever works for you. And then what you want to do is go in front of it. So you're going to alternate going in front of it and behind it. And so it's a little, these don't actually need to be staked yet but you get the you get the idea give it a, a twist around and then you'll go behind the next one and you'll give it a twist around now once you reach the end what you can do is you go back around again and you go the other way so basically what you do is you sandwich the plants between the two pieces of twine and you keep doing a new layer as the plants get bigger. So it's actually the next day. I ended up reshooting this because yesterday um, the sun got so bright off the White House that it was just impossible. Um, I thought I'd just quickly tell you about the five varieties of dahlias that I planted along here. Um, I did Penn Hill Dark Monarch, Penn Hill Watermelon, Breakout Labyrinth, and Cafe Olay. And they're all in the sort of orange to peach to pink, sometimes buff, range, which I think will just be a great backdrop for just a really colorful border that I like to create right here. Um, about watering, um, you might have seen that I have drip line run here. Uh, I did that last year for the first time and I think it's why I had such great dahlias last year. You know, dahlias don't necessarily need a lot of water, but they like consistent watering. So if I hook that up on a drip um, where they get watered once a day along with all the other annuals in here, uh, things seem to grow very well here. And this area is not an area that gets a lot of rain because it's underneath an eave um, and along the house. So it just seems to work better. And that way I don't have to come out here and do it, which is great. Uh, and then the other thing that people always ask about is fertilizing. Um, I don't really do any fertilizing. First of all, this bed is highly amended over here. So I've got a lot of organic material worked in here. This is really pretty good soil. And the way I do fertilizing is I only use organic fertilizers in anything I plant in the ground. I will use synthetic fertilizers in my container plantings, um, but in the ground I'm trying to really build my soil, so I don't want to add anything synthetic in there. So I will come in here and fertilize um, with like a seaweed feed or a fish feed, or I'll make my own comfrey feed um, and just fertilize all the annuals that are in here occasionally. But I really don't do a lot of feeding in this bed and they all seem to work out fine. So that's my dinner plate dahlias uh, for this year. 
And I will show you these as they grow throughout the season. I'm, I'm not sure when to expect the first blooms. Maybe it could even be in a month or so when you start them a little early. Uh, they really do get going early. So I will absolutely show you the rest of planting this bed when we get to that. And then we'll just sort of watch the progress of these plants throughout the year, as well as the rest of the garden. So thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.